Joining us now to talk about the world's most powerful telescope is Dr Lisa Harvey-Smith from the CSIRO's SKA project. Thanks for joining us. Uh, are you excited? This decision has been a long time coming. It was this power play between South Africa and Australia and now the committee essentially said, well, you can both have it. That's right. I'm really excited and uh, I think the Australia-New Zealand uh, astronomical community is also very excited about this decision. I've been up all night. So yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased. But is there some disappointment that it wasn't awarded to just one country or, or there was, it was a bundle of countries, essentially Australia was in there with New Zealand and the South Africans were there with uh, some other Southern African um, countries. Is there any disappointment that this is now going to be shared? Well, it's actually a global project, so everyone is going to share the data, everyone's going to share the science. So where the telescope is sited is just down to technical details and suitability of the site. So it's not like a contract where somebody wins, somebody loses. In fact, everyone wins, and this is a great win-win scenario. Just b before we talk about some of the finer detail, what is this project, what's the ultimate aim of this project? What's it want to do? The project wants to build the largest radio telescope in the world to understand what the universe is made of, to discover the mysteries of the early universe just after the Big Bang, how the first stars and galaxies and black holes were formed, how the universe has evolved throughout that time, and where we're going in the future. So when it actually comes time to building it, this is going to be a long-term project, obviously, and I gather it's in two phases. Uh, the first phase will see some um, mid-range or, or low-frequency low, uh, antennas in both Southern Africa and Australia, is that right? That's right, we have to look at a wide frequency range. It's like tuning your radio in to see the, the, the correct channels. And in science, we want to tune our radio telescopes in to see the correct objects in the correct um, areas of space. So what we're doing is using low frequency antennas um, built in Australia early on, as well as some uh, things that look like satellite dishes, uh, dish radio telescopes, um, to do large surveys. And in Southern Africa, there'll be lots and lots of dishes to do very uh, precise measurements of individual objects. So it's a, a range of technologies that will be used to do uh, complementary science. So the, large, the larger dishes are going to be in southern Africa, whereas the, the smaller antennae are going to be in Australia and New Zealand, is that right? Not quite right. The, um, the, the large number of dishes will be in, in South Africa, um, but what we have here in Australia is a, a huge array of tens of or hundreds of thousands of individual uh, little radio telescopes um, that are formed of dipoles that will antennas on the ground and this is a really new technology it's very exciting because it allows you to study the universe as a whole and study cosmology. Now of course this is going to generate huge amounts of data and that's going to require tremendous computer power to crunch that data. How is that going to occur and where is that going to happen? That's right well we're already developing the, the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre um, for SKA Science in, in Western Australia. It's sited in Perth and the, the building's being built right now. Um, so supercomputing is a huge area of development for this project. As you say, we, we, we can't do this with current technology. The amount of data will just be enormous. So it's a great um, line of development. We'll have large technology companies uh, interested in these contracts to develop the supercomputers and the data networks uh, required to do this, which will have great technological spin-offs for everyone, everyone So does else. that mean the brains of the project, if you like, are going to be located in Western Australia? The, uh, the brains of, of one of the arrays will probably be in, in, in Western Australia. Um, we'll probably need another supercomputer in South Africa as well, so it'll actually be, be a great um, great splitting of that technology as well. You talk about splitting. Given this project has now essentially been split between two continents, will that not raise the costs and the complexity of the project? Well, that was something the committee looked really, really carefully into. And the great thing is South Africa and Australia have already built a lot of infrastructure. And the telescope requires um, complex things like fiber optic networks, cables underneath the ground, and power, and roads, and all that infrastructure um, in remote areas. And that's already been developed um, in our Pathfinder projects in both countries. So in fact, that's a sort of a co-investment into the project that's already been made. And I should just get you, before, before we leave the subject, to explain the difference between an optical telescope, which people will be familiar with, with just the naked eye looking at the sky, yep. to radio telescopes, which is what this is all about. That's right. Radio telescopes just measure radio waves. And stars and galaxies, they emit light. You can see them in the night sky. But you can also see the radio waves that the, the gas emits from those objects. So it's just the same, just longer wavelengths that we're looking at. So radio telescopes, just like optical telescopes, make pictures of the sky just in radio waves. So it's invisible sky. The invisible universe is what we're trying to discover.
Dr. Lisa Harvey-Smith, thanks very much. Thank you.